Welcome back to Reality with Will and Jovu. Season two is here. We are back at school. This feels great being back in the studio. I'm not going to lie. Look, but things are going to be a bit different this season. I'm going to kick off the show now talking talking you through all the trending stories in the world of entertainment, show business, yada, 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 film, television, reality TV. I will still have interviewees. Don't you worry. Um, on today's episode, I've got Married at First Sight UK expert, uh, relationship expert, Paul Brunson. But first, we've got to talk through everything that we've missed out on. We need to catch up, basically. Uh, and the first story we're going to get into is India. Oh, amazing India. He was in this studio on that very same chair just a couple of weeks ago when she left the Love Island Villa. She has been awarded, blessed with not one, but two brand deals. One from Boots and one from Pretty Little Things Marketplace. Now, I'm not going to lie, when she left the villa, I mean, actually, after she did this interview, I was a bit worried because I started to see loads of Islanders um, announce their six-figure deals, another six-figure deal, another six-figure deal. I'm like, hold on. Where is India's deals? Like, and everyone on Twitter was saying this, and I think people were a bit like, oh, gosh, not again. And I think a lot of us will know that, look, I've been watching Love Island for years, probably like how you've been as well. And a lot of us will know that, sadly, when the darker-skinned women leave the villa, they don't seem to get the same opportunities as their white female counterparts. And it's just the thing that I've seen, okay? You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It's the thing that I've seen. Uh, but it's great to see India um, receiving her flowers. Again, two, not one. It's really, really good. Look, in season two, I'm going to be getting you guys to send in your opinions uh, via DMs on Instagram. But voice notes, I want to hear your voices. So I'm not just talking to myself, basically. And I have got a few voice notes. And, and an India super fan who doesn't want to be named um, has sent in a voice note just to speak about how happy she is about India's success. From her being an absolute girl's girl to her constantly forgetting her suitors' names, India remained true to herself through it all. To see her not get overlooked by companies and the general public is such a pillar moment and it encapsulates exactly what should have been happening from the beginning. I am so incredibly proud of you, India, and it is only the beginning for you and every one of us to follow. One thing I'm loving about India's supporters is that you can tell that they love her we all love her. People are really rallying and supporting India, as you can just, as you can hear there, basically. Next story we're talking about is a story which I have been debating about all weekend. The weekend. So The weekend was performing in LA a couple of days ago on stage. He got to about his third song on stage and he just said, look, I can't do this anymore. My voice is gone. Um, I'll give you guys a refund. I've got to go. I don't know what just happened when I screamed, but I just lost my voice. This is killing me. I don't want to stop the show. But I can't give you the concert that I want to give you right now. Uh, I'm going to make sure everybody's good. Get your money back. But I'll, also, I'll do a show real soon for you guys. But I wanted to come out and personally apologize and not tweet it or Instagram it or whatever. I want you guys to know that I can't give you what I want to give you right now. I apologize. I'm so sorry. I love you guys so much. <laughs> Obviously, as you can imagine, his fans are absolutely livid. Some of his fans are livid because some of his fans are like, look, I was waiting here for like four to five hours to see you perform. And you tell me that after five, six minutes, you're going. But at the same time, if the guy's unwell, then the guy's unwell. I don't even know what side of this debate I'm on because it's like, if I was there... I'm not saying I'm not a super fan of The Weeknd, but if I was there and a super fan of The Weeknd, I would be absolutely livid. A lot of his fans are saying that he should be cancelled. People are just saying that, like, he's taken the mic. Some people are saying that he should have mimed his songs, which I kind of agree with. I feel like if I was in a situation, I'm not a recording artist, so I don't know how it feels, like, to lose your voice. I mean, I do talk, <laughs> but I don't know how it feels like to, you know, be a performing artist and, and lose your voice. But for me, I would have just stood there and be like, but I just mimed the lyrics. But look, you guys have been sending in your voice notes to let me know what you think. Um, we've got a voice note from Zuzu. Here's what she had to say. Hi, Will. I'm so excited that you replied to me. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, my God. I'm so... Oh, no. So, let's get to it. Um, the weekend as uh, for a live performer, I think they need to sometimes run tests if they got the stamina to stand through and get through each performance because this is a lot. It takes a lot and the nerve and everything. 
It could be a sudden loss of voice and some performances will be affected, but uh, to stay on and mime, I don't think so. Do you know what, Zuzu? You have a point. Don't they do checks before? Look, I'm not slamming the weekend. I'm just, I'm just trying to think of all the possible ways that this concert could have carried on. Like, surely there would have been a rehearsal before. I don't know. I don't know. They could have just thought of a way through it. I don't know. Right, cool. We've got Rhea, who has very strong opinions on this as well. Now, at what point did he realise that he lost his voice? Because when he's speaking to the crowd, he seemed pretty fine. Would I be annoyed? Probably, yeah. Because, especially if I've been waiting for so long. But at the same time, he could have, like, spoken to someone backstage and then just, like, put the miming thing on and, like, no one would be none the wiser, to be fair. Let's be honest. I don't think he should be cancelled. You know, if he's ill, he's ill. There's nothing you can really do about it. They did get their money back as well. So at the same time, I wouldn't be that annoyed. I mean, Rhea, you're right. If he's ill, he's ill. If the guy can't sing, the guy can't sing. I guess fans in the audience kind of just wish that they knew he was ill before <laughs> they had to wait for three hours. If I was a musician and in the same situation as The weekend, I probably would have just mimed it all out. Or... Look, Jay Soul's a recording artist and he has, he makes a very valid point in here. So he kind of gets it as a recording artist and he's kind of told us what he thinks The weekend could have done. But yeah, I definitely don't think he should be cancelled, but I feel like he could have 100% been a bit more um, compassionate to the fans and supporters that have come a long way, that have, you know, planned this situation because the thing is that when you become an art, when you become an artist that does does something like this, people are always gonna start now questioning if they should spend their time and energy on buying hotels or flying across the pond to see the show because now you're just known to be untrustworthy, and that's that's not swag. So he went on just potentially to just pull it out of the bag. Even if he just got random people in the audience to jump on stage with him and do certain songs with him, like those moments like that people love to see it, like, living vigorously through other random people that you don't know on stage with an artist that you love. People love that. Do you know what? I hear Jay So's point about, like, his fans losing trust, but come on, it's the weekend. <laughs> the weekend could announce a concert tomorrow and everyone's going to be there. But I get it. Again, good point. Like, he could have done something where maybe he got fans on stage and just, like, danced and maybe got them to sing or just did something. But I guess, look, if you're not feeling well, you're not feeling well. The weekend shouldn't be cancelled. He's a talented artist. To my knowledge, I don't feel like he's done this in the past, has he? Don't feel like he's done this before. Um, but the most important thing is that fans got their money back and they watched him perform free songs. But I guess, you know, these concerts, people travel. They fought the government far, you know? People like, hey, I've come all the way from Alabama. Hey, I've come all the way from Texas. Hey, I've come all the way from... So, you know, they come from far. <laughs> At least people got their money back. That's the most important thing. But let me know what your thoughts are on Twitter. Use that hashtag, reality with Will. Right, this next story, I'm connected to it a lot because it just hits home. Two famous Hollywood actors, Timothy Chalamet and Tom Holland, have both spoken out in recent weeks about how toxic social media can be, the pressures, getting the engagement, showing people you're living a perfect life. Honestly, for me personally, I just use social media for work. I mean, I don't think I post... Oh, do you know what? I miss being 21, you know? Because when I was 21 years old and I wasn't working in the media and I wasn't in the public eye when I was working in the media, but I was just, like interning, I was posting so much random and ratchet stuff on my Instagram. Hey guys, I was, I was drunk on the floor at a party, but I feel like now you can't, I, well, I can't do it personally. I feel like Instagram is just such a judgmental place. And I don't know what you think, but you know the story views section where you can see how many people have viewed your stories and who's viewed it. Now, sometimes I get thousands upon thousands upon thousands of views. And it just makes me feel really anxious. I'm like, oh gosh, so that person's seen me talk about that and that person's seen me do that. And, oh, it just really messes around with me. Um, so I'm not surprised that Tom Holland and Timothy Chalamet have said, you know, they want to take a step back from social media. Obviously they are disgustingly famous and people are watching their every move and they're probably just like, do you know what? I'm tired of posting these pictures that make me look like I'm perfect because I'm not, because let's be real, we all have our lives away from social media. I know you do too. Uh, but again, been getting in voice notes, but I've got a voice note in from a friend who starred in the winter edition of Love Island in 2020. You remember Biggs Chris from Scotland? I love Biggs. 
But here's what Biggs had to say. Okay, I'll I'll keep it real with you, okay? Um, I do think, especially leaving Love Island, there was a lot of um, pressure on me, I felt, as in trying to meet up with this celebrity lifestyle, like, who's got the sickest trainers, who's got the most expensive jackets. And I ain't gonna lie, it's a couple of times I spend a couple of grand, you get me? On an expensive jacket that I did not need. But I did it, not, I did it for myself, but at the same time, we all buy expensive stuff because it looks flashy, you get me? And it gets people talking. It's a sad truth. Anyone that denies this, I'll slap them myself. You get me? Life and direct. So, but, yeah, yeah, I did feel a lot of pressure. It's not fair, and especially with Instagram, it's all about that glamorous lifestyle, fake lifestyle that's not real. But that's what makes social media so draining. I guess for Biggs, it's a bit different because, you know, he left Love Island. And you know what it's like when you leave Love Island, people expect you to be rich. They expect you to be in the nicest clothes. You've probably got paparazzi taking your pictures and you are expected to obviously post a lot on social media. And when you post a lot on social media, guess what? You need to have a lot of clothes. Because <laughs> you can't be posting in the same outfit. That's just how it goes. It's so toxic. Look, social media is a fun place. I love using it. I think it's fun. I think it's a great way to stay connected with friends. But just use it in moderation. Gosh, I mean, I need, I need to take my own advice because my screen time is terrible. I won't be disclosing that on this show. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but here's what Roxy thinks about social media and just Timothy Chalamet and Tom Holland taking a break. For everyone and how toxic it can be um, for your mental state, I think the problem with social media is that everyone wants to be living their best life and showing their best life. And in reality, um, it's not always the case. Um, I've actually been sort of that person in the past, you know, where I've posted things and you know, look at this, I'm having a great time. And then actually behind, behind the screen, there is, you know, a, a mental struggle. Um, and like, I think a lot of people are like that, that use social media, they have anxiety or, you know, social issues or depression and things. And a lot of it can be stemmed from the unrealistic um, portrait that social media portrays of other people's lives and how your life compares to them. And then you end up in just this big spiral of, you know, my life isn't as good as somebody else's because of what you see um, and even though you know yourself you have bad days and good days um, you see these other people and think they never have that do you know what Roxy you have taken the words right out of my mouth there have been times where I've posted on social media not in recent months because I just I don't post when I don't want to post anymore but there have been times previously in previous years where I've posted on social media and I look so happy but in my actual life I'm going through a beep time a terrible time so, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously at a stage now where I just, like, I don't post unless it's promoting my work or if, actually, you know, sometimes when I get drunk, I post by accident. <laughs> like, I don't mean to post. So if you see me on my story, my Instagram story, at a party, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, just bear in mind that that's Will drunk. He's going to delete this in the morning, and I always do. <laughs> and I always do. But right now, let's get into um, some of the TV shows I've been watching. I'm only really watching two shows religiously at the moment. Obviously, Love Island's gone, so I have found my the shows to fill that gap, basically. N number one is Dated and Related on Netflix. I'm absolutely loving it, and no, people are not dating their siblings, for goodness sake. When I tell people about this show, they're just like, oh, so people are like, no, no. So, siblings, about like six to seven siblings, enter a villa to date alongside their siblings. So they find love alongside their siblings and their siblings will be like their wingman helping them get the girlfriend or the boyfriend or whatever. And I'm really liking the cast. I think it's very diverse. And I like the fact that it's a mixture of like American people and you know, some Australian people and they're British people. I do think Love Island should do that, by the way. I know they've just kicked off Love Island USA, but I do feel like Love Island UK throwing an American in there. I mean, we had Davide, not but Davide lives in the UK, but, you know, throwing an American in there, throwing someone from Spain or wherever. I do think we should see more of that. I quite enjoyed that. Just like learning about different cultures and how people from around the world deal with dating scenarios. But it's really, really good. Kaz and Kieran, my favourites, they've really, really held this season up. And uh, an exciting surprise, I will be having Kaz and Kieran on the show next week. So watch out for that interview. Another show I'm watching religiously right now is Married at First Sight UK. 
when did it when did the UK edition first kick off? Was it last year? Didn't really pay attention last year, but this year my eyes are glued to the screen. I'm enjoying it. I mean, look, there's one thing, obviously, you know, going on speed dating and just like, oh, nice to meet you. But there's another thing, <laughs> you know, meeting someone for the first time who you're about to marry at the wedding altar. Wow, wow, wow. And there's a character on this show called Whitney. Um, a lot of people on Twitter have been like, why did Whitney go on the show? Obviously, Whitney's, um, I want to say partnered up, I mean, well, married <laughs> to Duca. Um, and let's just say she's... She's taking a bit of time to warm to him. But yeah, I, I I can't wait to see more of what they do on the show. And you never know. Sometimes opposites attract. You never know. Maybe they'll get together and live life happily ever after. But look, on the show today, I have got married at first sight UK expert, relationships guru, Paul Brunson in the house. And I'm going to be speaking to him in that chair in just a few minutes. Hey guys, it's me again. Don't forget to subscribe to my brand new show right here on YouTube. That's Reality with Will and Jovu. Or just hit me up on TikTok. I'm always on there. That handle is at WillNJO. Or hit us up on the gram for all the behind the scenes actions. That's at Reality with Will. And we are back with TV host Paul Brunson, everybody. There is everybody in the room. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, Will. you are the world's most influential matchmaker. That is a big title, you know. Yeah, but that's not the title I gave myself. <laughs> yeah. okay. Oh, do people think yeah. that you gave it to yourself? All, all, all the time, like in the press, people are like, he considers himself the most <laughs> influential. No, no, it's not me. There's a, a matchmaker institute. They're mm -hmm. called the Global Love Institute now. They were called yeah. the Matchmaking Institute, the oldest matchmaker wow. professional organization in the world. Mm. They are the ones who gave mm. me that title. So I'm very appreciative of that. Yes, and you are yes. crazy, it's incredible. Guy, ladies and gentlemen. I've been doing this for a while. Well, on the, on the, just on the side note, can I say this? Yeah. This is one of the best sets I've ever seen. It's the, so cool, oh right? God, this set is like, this is like real. This is, <laughs> this is real. For a podcast. Yeah, 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 is, Studios, everybody. Yeah, it's very nice. Very nice. It's cool. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Like, we haven't actually met until today. Yeah. We've been we've been cyber friends for like was it a year? Or yeah, like for, for a long time. But yeah, you know, we've spoken on the phone and all that stuff. Yes, but you are who you convey to be. Mm, you know what I thank mean? Thank you, yeah. And, and I think that's very important. There's mm. a lot of folks who convey that they are a certain way on the on the interwebs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who <laughs> on are the not, gram, yeah. Who are not. They don't even look like they, they, they don't even look like it. You know what I mean? You yeah, meet them, yeah, yeah. But, but you look like how you look on the gram. You sound like it. But most importantly, you, you behave like that, you know, yeah. and I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and you like, your, your career is just phenomenal because you started off on in American TV, yeah. morning shows. You've yeah. been, just tell me about your career over there first. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, this is not a plug or, 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 <laughs> or, or, or a humble brag, but it was Oprah Winfrey who was the first person who put me on television. Wow. Yeah, yeah. she found, I mean, I was, TV wasn't my thing. I was a matchmaker. I ran a matchmaker uh, company in, you know, in the DM, we call it DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Um, and Oprah saw a YouTube video of mm. mine. And it was through that YouTube video that I landed on a television show, co-hosting a TV show with Oprah. Wow. Which, which is which is wild. So my first TV gig was co-hosting a that show. That is crazy. With Oprah. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's um, crazy. And what was it like working with Oprah? Man, it was everything you can imagine. It was incredible. It was... Uh, one is uh, no one who works with her calls her Oprah. We call her Miss Winfrey. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you don't call her Oprah. Call her Miss Winfrey. Why can't you call her Oprah? I'm like, uh, Oprah, nah, come on, Oprah. Nah, nah, nah. She'll correct you. <laughs> she'll, she'll, no. Yeah, she, 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 she will correct you. But she is she's a perfectionist, mm. you know. And what I learned from her is the importance to strive for not necessarily perfection, but excellence. Yeah. And to do everything to the highest degree. Mm. And what's interesting is, is that that's I think that's the reason why I don't get necessarily nervous. Mm. Because I came off, I came out the gate with Oprah, you know. Yeah, so it's one big, of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but absolutely incredible. She changed my life, and because of her blessing, not only on that show, but her saying, "Hey, Paul's a great guy. Like yeah. he's a great coach. He's he's more than a matchmaker." That's what I think allowed my matchmaker agency to grow so fast wow. in the U.S. But that's kind of what you need, isn't it, in in this industry? Like someone with that amount of power to just open those doors to vouch for you. Yeah, the the whole I think the whole entertainment industry, yeah. and even the social media industry, yeah. works off of being vouched for. Mm -hmm. Right, a lot of people say, say I'm self-made. Say it again and again and again. Oh man, that that's what it is. I think that's the reason why you see so many people trying to land on these shows. 
like a celebs go dating mm. or even you know there's a big debate around how many people want love versus the platform in married in first married at first sight yeah. i think a lot of people want the vouching from that entity to help boost their career yeah and obviously you are on married at first sight uk yes um you're an expert on there and yes. what you said is key you know the amount of people who want love versus the platform and after watching this for the first time ever I'm so invested and I can see that these people want love. Yeah. You, you can see through the emotions. Like you wouldn't just go through that, you know, just for a platform alone. And, and obviously, look, you're you're an expert on this show, but you were also part of the casting process as well. Yeah, absolutely. So so and I, and thank you for for bringing that up because yeah. a lot of people are like, "Okay, he's just he just shows up." <laughs> I, I don't even know that. No, yeah. <laughs> nah, I show up months before. Wow. So it yeah, I'm, so I'm working on the project up to 3 months before we start filming. Wow. So even right now, a lot of, this is this is a, a exclusive for you. Right now, we're working on the casting for the next. What? Married at First Sight for next year. So why does it take so long, Paul? Why does it take so long? <laughs> what? Oh man, can I tell you? You know what? I've never. Can I break down the process? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I've never done it, but I feel like we could do it mm -hmm. here. Is so you think you may have say ten thousand people who apply yeah. to the show. So that's ten thousand. But out of the 10,000, the vast majority, maybe eight out of 10 are going to be nixed for a reason. Maybe they don't complete their application. Maybe we do the background research and they've got racist, homophobic oh, rants going on on social media. Okay. So about 80% of them drop. So you may only have 2,000 after that. Yeah. Then after the 2,000, then they are given psychological tests. Yeah. They're given extensive background That's checks. Important. Yeah. Right? So after you do that, that may mm. drop down to another 1,000. Mm. Then after the 1,000, the network has to do interviews with you. Okay. And let's be real. We're, you, I mean, reality, this is TV. Yeah. You need to have a personality that pops. Mm. If, if, if you're... Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so true, though, yeah. yeah. It's so true. If your personality is like this wet paint... <laughs> oh, my God, I thought this was brick. This is not even brick. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was brick. Yeah, <laughs> this is not brick. Oh, my God, this is It so looks good. like brick, yeah. though. It looks like brick. <laughs> I thought it was brick. Is this wood? <laughs> uh, is this wood? What's <laughs> real in here? What's real? Is this a MacBook? Is this even a laptop? <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, if, if it's dry... <laughs> It's, it's, it's not going to pop. So yeah. so then you get smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm. And then eventually you get to a small pool of maybe two, three hundred people. Yeah. And it's that's the pool that we have to match. Yeah. So that's the reason why the casting takes so long and the matching process is so wow. hard. OK, so what are the things you look for in people for them to like match? I, I just don't know how you do it. I'm like. How'd you do this? Because because some couples on the show actually do gel just so well, but then for some it seems like oh opposites. But then sometimes opposites attract. So like, what things do you look for? Yeah, although I think opposites attract, and then they attack. Like, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's what happens with, with, with opposites. It's a bit toxic. Just a bit toxic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, th there there are some fundamental things you look for in, in a match, right? Mm. Some of the, like the nerdy psychological things like good attachment styles, et cetera. Yeah. But ultimately you want somebody who has shared values. Mm. You want somebody who has a shared vision for what they want out of life. Yeah. And then you want someone who you believe is going to be physically attracted to the partner, yeah. right? And that's the hardest part mm. in Married at First Sight because you are literally getting married at first sight. It's crazy. Man, it's, it's crazy because what ends up happening in casting all of the time is people first come in and they'll say, like, if you were interviewed, yes, it will. I'm open. What do you mean you're open? I mean, I'll take anybody. Really? You'll take anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah anybody. And then as you get closer to the date, they'll say, wait, hold on for a second. <laughs> I want somebody who's this type. Ah. Oh, I want somebody who's this. Oh, oh so now you've got a type. <laughs> now you've got a type. <laughs> right. Interesting. I'm like, it's too late. <laughs> your, your, your bride is in the back <laughs> right now. You know what I mean? It's and she's late. ready <laughs> to hit the altar. It's too late, you know? But 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 that's our job is to try to pull that out of them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Yeah. And one thing I want to know, again, I'm so new to this show and I'm so fascinated by everything. Are these legally binding <laughs> marriages? So does this mean that once they get married on that altar, um, that if they don't like each other after that, they have to get a divorce? Like, is that not pray? Like, what's what's the deal? Yeah, it it used to be that way. Okay. So it it was when I started in C uh, f series five is when I started. Yeah. It was legally bonding. Then it was it was switched to non legally bonding. But yeah. that's the reason why we have a vow renewal at the end. I see. At the vow renewals, where you say, okay, 
I'm now committing to my partner. Yeah, fine. You know, but yeah, all but the marriages that you see, those are not they're they're not legally yeah. bounded. However, they're bounded by your fit like your family is there. Yeah. I mean, you get you got mom that and dad. Is, yeah. Yeah. That's real. That's you know what I mean? Real. Your mom and dad's like, you drag me out <laughs> to see this thing. Like, it's real. So yeah, it so to that extent it's real. Yeah. And I guess for you as a matchmaker, um, I think if I was a matchmaker and I put two people together and they were not compatible, I'd be livid. Like I'd feel like I've done some injustice. Like, how does that feel when you've like you, you, you've done all the work, you've done everything you could in your expertise, and you're like, yeah. oh, it just didn't work out. Yeah. How does that feel? In the com Watch the commitment ceremonies, mm. you'll see my frustration <laughs> in this. Because cause what happens is mm. you see two people who could potentially be great for each other yeah. if they would throw away all the fake, mm. if they would throw away the mask, if they would throw away the pretension, if they would throw away the representative and just yeah. get to the real. And when you see them sit on that couch, you can ask yourself, okay, and this I'm talking about this at the commitment ceremonies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they working towards trying to build something? Mm. And some of them end up listening and they build towards it. Yeah. And some of them don't. But it's hard. Come on, let's 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 just talk about normal real life, like when you're dating. It's hard to meet someone and just marry them, Paul. Uh, let, let, let's let's yeah. call this spade a spade. So yeah. so we can't blame those people as they're struggling, you know. I guess look, I also understand it's a TV show, but I guess it must be quite tricky for them to come to terms with it, but I guess at the same time, they want to get married. <laughs> so, so, so there's all these different thoughts. <laughs> I don't know how you do yeah, your job, Yeah, man. I'm saying, why they Absolutely. sign up? Why they sign up? I mean, if you sign, if you sign up for that, yeah. then, then, then be willing to accept everything. Yeah. And, and it's not like they have surprises because they have watched the show before. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But that being said, I do admit it's incredibly hard to be in this experiment because you're yeah. you're kind of locked out of the world and you're with someone who you just met you're with yeah. other couples that you might be comparing yeah. right you've got it's a tv show you know you got these experts drilling at you yeah. you're missing family and friends it, it it's a lot it's yeah. a lot so so i applaud all of them yeah and why do you think people are like loads of people loads of more and more people are watching the show number one and, and applying for this show is that because of the dating sphere right now i feel like with like these dating apps and everything I mean, I've been on them and I'm actually <laughs> tired. And I said to myself after watching this, boy, I'd go on the show just to get married because at this point I'm over it. So yeah. do you feel like in the dating scene right now, are we just at that stage where people just, they want to get rid of the mess. They want to get rid of all that like, one, two, three, four, five dates and just get married. Yes. All right. So we'll, we get a lot of, uh, a lot of people joke us in the first week and a half because <laughs> they're like, you experts, what, what are you doing? You, yeah, you don't know yeah, anything. Yeah. But what, can I brag real quick mm -hmm. and compare this to a dating app? Yeah. Do you know what our success rate is what? on this on this series? What? I started series five. Between series five and series six, we have a near fifty percent success wow. rate. Wow! Near, near, near fifty per, near fifty percent. Right. So you think about that. That's higher than any dating app. That's higher than going to a speed dating event. Yeah. That's higher than going to the bar. And, and I mean, this is the real deal. This is marriage. This isn't even a, <laughs> this is the real deal. It's the real deal. And we have not one, but two babies. Wow. Two UK babies. So one has already been born. The second is coming, right? This is, she, uh, Tay and Adam are, are pregnant. Yeah. So it can work. Yeah. You know, and that's Still. what I want to say. It can work. So yeah. So Will, you could apply right now. You could be on next year. Listen, we should I'm do this. We should do this. <laughs> I'm available because at this point I'm over it. <laughs> would, would you want? We, we were there was talk about a celebrity. Oh, I would do it because at this point Married I'm over at first it. Sight. Like, honestly, would you do I'm, it? Yeah, I'm over. I'm over all of this dating stuff. It's just too much. Okay. I mean, I think where we are now, like I said, the dating apps. It's just so fickle. Obviously, this is my generation, so this is all I've really known. It's just like, you know, you could be talking to someone and then, I mean, sometimes I do it where I'm just like, I've forgotten I'm not using the app. And you forget about the person. Yeah. And, you know, you could be building a bond and vice versa. And then you could meet someone and then, nah, I'm going to ghost them. <laughs> and no, yeah. because you can. You, yeah. you, can, you can just ghost them. Or you could be talking, oh, I'm going to unfollow them. Like, yeah. it's that easy to just, like, get rid of someone now that it's just like, where is the real love? Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I need to I need to kind of sort my life out. <laughs> wow. You, so, so, so you need to come on the show. Yeah, I need That's to come need on the show because honestly, but then when I look at couples like Whitney and and Juka, 
I say this is an interesting scenario because a lot of people on Twitter at the moment are saying, oh, why did Whitney sign up for the show? Why is she there? Yada, yada, yada. But actually, you can see that Whitney is looking for love. Otherwise, she wouldn't have signed up for this show. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that she wants to get married. Otherwise, she wouldn't have signed up for this show. So I think what people are doing is they're looking at, you know, her bold, her personality and, and kind of judging her. Uh, when actually it's clear that there's kind of more than meets the eye to, to her persona, isn't there? Isn't there? Yeah, I, I love that you're saying this. Yeah. Because let's keep it real. A lot of people watch the show just to judge. Mm. They watch the show to point fingers. Yeah. They watch the show to say, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's a lot of that. Secondly is every single human being on this planet has layers. Yeah. Right? There's levels to this game called human life. Mm -hmm. And so Whitney definitely has layers. Yeah. And I believe what the audience will see, and Will, I think you're already there, is you're going to see those layers peel back and you're mm -hmm. going to understand why she behaves the way that she behaves. Now, I'm not excusing yeah. the rudeness <laughs> and, 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 and that, right? Ooh, yeah. But what I, will, what I will say is that she's a human being and we need to just respect her off of her humanity, yeah. um, but I go in on Whitney. I mean, you know, I mean, I I definitely do throughout the series because mm. um because because and and the reason why I do it is because I know how good I believe I know how phenomenal a person there is yeah. in there. You know what I mean? And uh, and hopefully uh, through this experiment, she uh, she realizes that. Yeah, and but I mean, look, she said that this show is the worst thing she's ever done. Like, she seems so against it and hesitant but at the same time you know she's there to find love so it's kind of like a catch-22 it's like oh which one which side am i on so I'm, I'm quite confused but i still feel quite sorry for juker i'm not gonna lie because he really is trying his best he really is trying to make it work and you can see that he's he is really is trying to push through and and see why why you guys put them together but sometimes whitney's just not making it easier for him so i, I do sympathize with him a lot all right, so I love I, I love all of them. All right, yeah. they're they're my little brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. Duke, Duke is my man. I, I was actually chatting with Duke last night, yeah. right? That's my man. I think the argument that Whitney has is a fair argument to have, mm -hmm. or should I say, discussion. Yeah. And that discussion is is does someone change their behavior because the camera comes on them? Yeah, and that's a discussion that I've never heard had mm. on reality TV. Mm. Like we're doing some crazy stuff that's never been done. Before, like, I, like Keisha broke the fourth wall for the first time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if you saw that, where there was a scene where Keisha and Kwame are, are talking, right? Yeah. And Keisha turns. And she looks into the camera. She looks into yeah, the camera. Yeah, yeah, no one's that, yeah. ever done that before, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing innovate. So part of the discussion is is does someone change mm -hmm. because they're on camera, yeah. right? And and uh, and I love that discussion. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, and let's let's talk about April and George because I think with those two, when I first saw their relationship, I said, this is very smooth sailing. I quite liked it in the beginning. I said, this is very perfect, unproblematic, whatever. And then, <laughs> and then yes. the whole cheating saga came about. And I had, I actually had a big debate uh, with my friends about this because she said that she was, um, so she, she was playing games, wasn't she? In which she kissed another woman. Yeah, truth or dare. I, it doesn't matter what game it is at this point, my heart's already, <laughs> I'm already fuming, <laughs> like, truth or dare. But to me, that's still cheating. Right, right. And I don't know why everyone's kind of moving past this because everything was so, in my opinion, quite smooth sailing before, that is still cheating. Yeah. Um, And I don't, I think that's just that really. So once again. Is that cheating? Well, well, well let me, I'm not gonna try to be real political about this, <laughs> but. What I love yeah. is that it's now created a conversation yeah. around, is that cheating? Mm. What is cheating? Mm. What constitutes cheating? If she had kissed a man, would mm. that have been cheating as well or no right because she kissed a woman is that cheating or no like there's a mat there's a there's a ma there's know. a massive debate also she didn't do it in front of him which you know but my it's point was yeah, yeah, yeah I mean here's the thing I definitely give my opinion on this yeah right in the commitment ceremonies I give my opinion on yeah. on what I think happened but one thing I will say is they did not move past it mm. so this is going to be this recurring theme that pops up and you're going to see certain cast members think it was. Yeah. And other cast members don't think it was. Yeah, but like in any relationship, as you can as you can imagine, if anyone has cheated or even done anything of the slightest, trust 
just starts to deteriorate. And one thing I've learned in life from any friendship, relationship, once the trust is starting to go, mm-hmm. oh, that relationship is literally, yeah. it's, it's going, it's, it's gone. Done. It's done. So, so how, can they get, how can they come back from that? Yeah, I mean, they're going to have phenomenal counseling, can I say? Yeah. By Which the they best. need by the best. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> get get him in there. Get get Paul yeah, in there. Yeah. yeah. But but uh, to to your point, absolutely. And then also keep in mind that you have George coming off of a, a previous relationship where trust was broken. Yeah. Right. So he already is. He doesn't have a great relationship with yeah. trust. And then this happens. And and I think that's the reason why this becomes very fascinating watching. Wow. This yeah. is so many good storylines and. And, and Jess and PJ were interesting because I remember watching them and I was like, they are very compatible. You know, is it the Harry Potter similarity they have? I'm like, what could possibly go wrong here? Like, even their energy, I said, yeah, this is all great. Yep. Then when he starts speaking about the job he does as like a stripper or is it like a professional dancer, I honestly didn't think that she seemed like the type to kind of even be annoyed by that because I thought, all right. But it was a big deal. She wasn't, you know, she didn't even head back in the reception for a while. So that made me have another debate with my friends. This is what I mean. This show is literally sparking so many debates. Yeah. You know, should you judge a potential partner because of the job they do or whatever? I don't know. Yeah. If you're compatible, then you're compatible. But I guess the question that her mum was asking, you know, are you going to be able to financially support? And these are real questions that come into play when you're thinking about marriage. Yeah, but then you have to ask yourself, should that be a topic today? Yeah. In 2022, you know, th- this is this is what I found. One is it's a great debate. Mm. It's a great debate. But then you have to look at a couple of things. One is she has a career of her own. Mm. She can support herself, right? That's one. Secondly, is, is that I know that her, that her mother mentioned. Well, you know, he's not going to be home at nights and you know on the weekends. <laughs> well, if he was, let's say, a doctor, yeah, right, w- w- would there be a concern? Mm. Maybe, maybe not, right? I think that it's great to watch Jess and PJ, and I'll also say this, and this is this is my opinion, and hopefully I don't get in trouble on this, is I think that whenever you see people present challenges yeah. right away, it's normally cover mm. for the real challenge. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that could be the case, but you'll have to watch this whole thing play out and see what actually happens. Wow, I cannot wait for the commitment ceremony episodes. Like I just, oh, I can't wait. Stay or leave. Obviously, you can't spoil it, <laughs> but Man, it, it's going to be big, right? It's, it's crazy. I mean, Will, I went to see a therapist before the commitment uh, ceremonies. Wow. Why? So the day before, I saw my therapist, and then I went to the commitment ceremony, and then the day after, I saw my therapist. <laughs> Please. I'm, I'm for real. That's 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 the level. That's the wow. level of, 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 of these commitment ceremonies. That's the level. Wow, that's so crazy. Do you feel like any of these cast members have made any mistakes that maybe you made in your younger years? So that maybe when you look at them and, and you're advising them, you're like, look, I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm, I'm making crazy mistakes. You know, mm-hmm. I make mistakes all the way up to this day. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the value of us as experts is between myself, Charlene, and Mel, mm-hmm. we are completely different. Yeah. Like, we come from different countries. Yeah. You know, Mel, Australia, Charlene here, I'm from the U.S., mm-hmm. completely different backgrounds growing up. Mm-hmm. And I think that those those personal experiences yeah. plus our professional experiences help to guide uh, the, the the couples. And what's be- like really beautiful is, and and you know what though, I want you to to, to hold me to this yeah. is, I believe, and you correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. I believe that this cast of Married at First Sight is the most diverse cast, very very diverse, of yeah, any reality dating show. I agree. Period. I agree. Ethnicity, yep. sexuality, mm-hmm. age. Political, um, which you'll see that the, I mean, you got Boris Johnson lovers on there. Yeah, you get you got other, um, so uh, yeah, socioeconomic, um, professional, age. Mm. You know what our median age is? Our median age is forty years old mm. on this cast. That's really good. Forty, you know. So it's so diverse. It's yeah. so rich, and so you need to have experts that could speak to all those experiences. Yeah. It's important. And look, you, you don't just work on Married at First Sight UK. You work on Celebs Go Dating. Yes. And, you know, a little birdie's told me this is now in production. Yes. I know you might not be nowhere near done yet, but what can we expect from the cast and from just from the vibe of this next season? It, it'll be the best the best Celebs Go Dating wow. ever. And that's no disrespect to 
any you know previous, uh, but we, we've put a lot of work to try to figure out how we could take it to the next level. Wow. So we're, we're opening up new new elements of the agency. Ooh, okay, uh, I may get in trouble on this one, but <laughs> but we're we're, we're 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 doing we're doing many things differently, yeah. and then also um, Anna, um, Tom Reed Wilson, you know our, my co-host, we also are better. Mm. Like we're better at what we do, and we're bringing that this year. Good, cannot wait to see that. But yes. we have had a voice note in. Um, from a listener uh, and forward slash a viewer um, who watches this show. Uh, and I think they just want a bit of, of help okay. um, with their love life. So All here right. we go. Let's hear it. So my love life is a mess right now. I'm currently seeing a lady from East and everything is all well. But it's not the same vibe as my previous partner of two years, which makes me want to search for someone more. However, they say they shouldn't be dating on a budget, you shouldn't be dating someone if you haven't got the suitable finance. I personally disagree, but I want to get adverse, detailed advice or answer from an expertise like yourself. So I guess there's two things. There's number one, yeah. he's dating someone new and the relationship doesn't feel the same as his previous one. And I guess number two, you know, can you date on a budget? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you date when you can't afford to pay for the dates and, and, and all the expensive stuff? Yeah, definitely. So I'll take number two first is yeah. I'm, I'm with you, caller, right? I'm with you. Mm. You can date on a budget. A matter of fact, I think that what you want to do is you want to reduce all of those costs up front, mm. right? You shouldn't be on these lavish dates. Why? Because they actually don't return anything. You know, mm. the best first date, the best first date is coffee, quick coffee or a walk in the park. You know, maybe go to the record, like a record store and play, you know, your favorite music, Preach. my favorite music. You know what I mean? It's free. And, and, and maybe you maybe you spend for that for the record, for the album. Right. Yeah. But that's it. But these these are the best because that's what allows you to determine somebody's values. Mm. Right. And so, so, yes, you can date on a budget like for, for sure you could do that. As far as the first question goes, though, the first the first part of the question is, nah, she, she's not right for you. She's, really? she, she, she's not she's not right for you and, and there's a couple reasons why but the biggest reason is he just said he's considering looking elsewhere mm. and he's also comparing mm. when you compare you despair but it's i guess it's you hard to I mean? not compare when you've left uh a long, or I'm guessing a serious relationship, and now you're dating because you're like, oh is this person better than the last is that not a natural thing to do so it's natural to think about are things better or are things worse yeah. right but here's something that, I, that, that is just, I've seen play out over, the, over time, and I especially see this with men, the older that men get, mm -hmm. right? Is there becomes more of a focus around, I'm not playing games anymore. Yeah. I'm not playing games. Like even, you, you just said this earlier. You're like, I don't want to be on these dating apps. I'm, I'm not, for it. I'm not playing <laughs> games anymore. Yeah. yeah, you get to a point where you get serious about life. Mm. And, and I say, this happens with men a lot because women have done, done, I've already done this. Like we're, yeah. we're late to catch up. But what he's doing is, is one, he's comparing. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, he's already suggested he may look out outside. Yes. One thing that I always saw with my matchmaking clients, right, for 10 plus years, mm -hmm. is that whenever the men who, remember, they're paying the matchmaker fee, which the matchmaker fees were crazy. Yeah. Matchmaker fees were between 10,000 and 20,000 wow. pounds. Well, the equivalent of pounds, right? So you're spending a lot of money. So you're not, you're not playing games. You know what I mean? You're not yeah. playing games. What they would do is the moment that they went on the first date and they thought that was someone who, who they would immediately try to lock them down, mm. right? A lot of people don't know this, but men have the highest rates of suicide around relationships. It's wow. Not, it's, it's men. And the reason for it, men, men are the first to say, I love you in relationships, right? Yeah. You think about this. So what does that mean? What that suggests is that when men switch into the zone of they want a long-term committed relationship, mm -hmm. there's no games played. Mm -hmm. There's none. And I'm, I'm speaking, I mean, I play games. And then once I switched into that mode, it was like, I'm not playing any more games. Mm. And there's lots of reasons for it. Evolutionary psychology reasons, there's lots of reasons, but that's the bottom line. So when I hear this caller say, I'm comparing against my last, I'm thinking about looking out, 
she's she's not the one for you. I'm mm. sorry, she's not the one for you. Wow. So one last tip, Paul. Um, so all of our viewers who are young and probably want to find love but just aren't sure what they should do. I mean, you know, enjoy you. Mm. Like that that that's the key. Is 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 enjoy you. Spend time doing you. When I say spend time doing you, what I mean is that we all have values. Mm -hmm. Our values are our rule book to life. And the best way for you to build up your Mm self-esteem, the best way for you to build up your skills to become a professional presenter, like (laughs) like, like Will is, the the best way to do these things is to feed your values. And when you feed your values and you're winning in your values, your self-esteem goes up, right? Your confidence goes up. You look sexier, you feel mm. sexier, you know, you're winning. And then when you're in that zone of winning, you're in the best position mm. to find somebody else. So identify your values, feed those values. That's the best thing that you could do. Paul, oh, thank you so much for joining me on the show. You got it. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. Thank you. Thank you.